blood of the ration. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I tell you, you are welcome to our miracles radio and television ministry. Welcome. 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 Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. 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 Yeah. 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 October 10. I was born October 9. Wow. So, oh, How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do that? So, so, we put it on today because uh, it was going to be more convenient for us and uh, 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 it's better today. So uh, she wants to come and sing one or two songs oh, yes. to glorify God. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's welcome, Reverend Dr. Felicia.
if you all want to thank you all for coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, quickly, I want to share a brief testimony of the Our Miracles Radio and Television Ministry. How it all began. Actually, you, you all know that this call of God is not something we really negotiate. You know, there's a lot of us who apply to God. <laughs> Pastors, you know what I'm talking about. To, to be used of God or to be a vessel. Uh, to be a, a preacher, you know. Uh, uh, but this is a divine call that God placed on our lives. And uh, uh, in 1998, God laid in my heart and He's going to use me to speak His word in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, then I just uh, finished Bible college in the next city. I was ordained by the Archbishop Ben Sridakosa, and uh, he placed his hands on me and prophesied over me. Uh, actually, I didn't know what those things meant. All those prophetic utterances he made over me, mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought I took them for granted. Mm -hmm. But um, the whole thing began to manifest. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I found myself preaching in churches, in crusades, in revivals, conferences all over Nigeria. Uh, so many cities and places and villages and towns. Uh, I thought that was going to be the end. Before I knew it, I was being invited to preach. Uh, first of all, it was MTA for that call. I'll never forget this one. Uh, because that, that had a big impact. MT, National Television uh, of Nigeria in Polakos. And uh, they gave me 30 minutes every Sunday. It was 4 p.m. to 4.30 every Sunday, and uh, I was on that station for several months. It made so much impact, it covered the whole of River State and almost half of Nigeria, and it was reaching far and wide. I didn't know how far this was until I started getting invitations to churches. Mm -hmm. They started um, taking me to the Anglican churches. Those churches these, those are uh, those are Orthodox churches, but they were spotting me on MTA for that court, and uh, they are the the pri they are priests. They said we would need this man of God, please call him for me, uh, bring him for us. So uh, all the churches were opening all over the place. Uh, I thought that was all, and uh, God opened more doors. The River State Television that was the local station that covered. The whole of River State, Bayesa, Aqua Ibom, Calabar area. Uh, this was a, a smaller station. I was on uh, RS TV for a couple of months again, made another impact. Our brother, Evangelist Davis, is going to come and in 10 minutes, he's going to uh, exhort us because we have more pastors, more ministers here. He wants to exhort us about uh, media, the media world, because that's where that's what he's calling. Mm -hmm. uh, he is very vast. Mm -hmm. uh, he has recorded me and heard me in his AGTV so many times. And uh, he wants to enlighten us. Minister, uh, welcome, Evangelist yeah. David. Yeah. Yes, very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Enlighten yeah. us, yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here. Uh, as Bishop is not just uh, a bosom friend, you know, an encourager mm -hmm. to me and my wife. Um, some of you knew what I went through. I'm a media consultant, producer, television producer. Uh, I own uh, the AGTV ministry and the founder, uh, founder president. Uh, like I said, um, I train as a uh, television producer, television radio film producer in Nigeria. I've also had some a uh, bit of training in Europe while I was working for uh, a state television station in Nigeria, Kwebum State. And there the Lord gave me a revelation. I actually had the revelation while I was in college uh, studying that the media was going to be a very big uh, path of world evangelization. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we were praying, the Lord told me, you're going to U.S. United States. Because there he's going to now establish that promise. And made me of being 
an international media evangelist. Praise the Lord. So I came, we didn't just materialize, we, we got the visa, we came over, you know, with my family, we settled here, and you know how you come as, as a new person, a new, it's not easy to break in, you know, you just struggle. Actually, somebody introduced me, the church we attended, somebody introduced me to a Fairfax uh, broadcasting station here that's public access in, in Merrifield, Fairfax. So I went in there and became a producer and even had a part-time job with them as a production assistant. And it wasn't paying much, so I'm like, I have to take care of my family, I can't be doing this. <laughs> but with them I did, you know, produce my own independent program that won an award that year. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. That inspired me, I'm like, okay, maybe God wants me to do something independent. I shouldn't just be looking for a TV station to work, especially if they're not paying me enough, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's where the inspiration for AJTV Ministries came. Yeah. And uh, we started, you know, I mentioned it to a couple of friends and ministers that that's what God wants me to do. You see, a ministry doesn't necessarily have to be something you, you earn an income from. You know, it's, you are a servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm busy serving the Lord. The Lord provided the opportunity for me to, you know, get some equipment and started producing in my home. I have a small home studio. So well, like, the story is actually to confirm that if mm -hmm. God has given you a call, like That's right. my uh, Abisho was saying mm -hmm. that he thought, well, you know, initially it's gonna not, you know, it's not gonna happen like you probably dreamed, but mm -hmm. it's gonna need some consistent work mm -hmm. because it's vision. Vision mm -hmm. is for a point in time. Yes. Hey. And uh, mm. so I started that thing like about, Five years, yeah, but last year was five years. This year, six years since so we had a, a started AGC Ministries and started producing uh, on YouTube. Then you know, YouTube you couldn't broadcast the whole program because I was also broadcasting at the Fairfax Public Access, thirty you know twenty minute twenty eight minutes uh, segment. So I had to be you know breaking it into part one, part two, part to be able to fit into YouTube. But now, after a while, the now made it that you can still broadcast the quality, you know, 30 minutes as a whole uh, mm -hmm. program. I even, you know, upload up to an hour, right. you know, because I do network, you know, with ministers when they have occasions like this, they invite me. So I also put it on YouTube for them. The Lord already told me that at a point, you know, television, you know, broadcasting is going to be internet based. Everything is going to move. From cable, you know, and it's already happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mobile, you know. Ah. People probably watch more television on their mobile, you know, mm -hmm. phone and iPad yeah. than they watch at home. Yes. Mm. Praise the Lord. And again, the thing is that you can have access to that program anytime mm. because it's, you know, you don't have to, you know, kind of even record it. You can always go to mm -hmm. your favorite channel mm -hmm. and check your program. So, I'm saying this testimony to encourage us that if God has given you a vision about using, taking your ministry beyond your local church, beyond, you know, uh, the places that you you teach or preach, and the, you know, small congregation that you reach, see, because there are nations, there are people all over the world that are hungry for the word of God. I remember one time, let me just share this, you know, before I, I call it briefly, somebody, uh, in Europe, watch one of the episodes that I produced. It was actually a testimony about healing by one of the pastors in my church. So he contacted me through uh, Skype and text, you know, sent me a text message and you know, asked question about you know, how he can get in touch with the producer or the person that you know, shared that testimony. That is, he's actually having issues you know, in his health and he would need some, somebody, you know, you know, he wants that kind of miracle. Mm -hmm. So I eventually, uh, since he contacted me through Skype, and with Skype, you know, with your handheld device, you can actually, through Skype, talk to somebody anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So one day I decided to connect with him. He could see my face, I can see his face. Mm -hmm. And we talked, and we prayed, and, you know, shared encouragement. That was before my, my own issue. <laughs> you know, my health issues. So 
You see, that's how easy it is for you to connect globally with the gospel. Mm-hmm. And what Pastor, I mean, as Bishop is doing, I know he's very animated and very passionate about it, using YouTube, and he will sit down in his room and just feel himself. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it is not the quality, it is the message. Yes. 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 You know? Yes. Yeah. It's the message, and it's reaching out and touching people. Yeah. So you can say, well, I don't have the equipment. That is what the social media is meant for. You yeah. don't have to be a professional. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, do all those mm. editing. And, well, if you have the money and you can afford my service, I'll do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> but on your own, mm. all you need is, you know, just, uh, you don't even need a camera now. You know, all you need is your iPad. Yeah. <laughs> You sit down and put it somewhere and you start talking. Yeah. Yeah. Upload it. Yeah. And somebody in Jamaica would see it and get encouraged. Mm-hmm. Somebody in Africa would yeah. see it and get encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. And then they start contacting you, you know, to pray for them or even want to support your ministry. Yeah. So it's very important. We are in uh, a media age and the, the media is not, not just, you know, local anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, social media has actually made put a lot of other medias, you know, all those uh, established media media out of business. Mm -hmm. You find that even the network televisions are also also connect through the, you know, social media. Everybody has, is trying to connect through the social media. Mm -hmm. And thank God that he gave me that vision even before it became the popular thing. And uh, I've always, I've had testimonies, you know, people contacting me, you know, sometimes not even, you know, Contacting me with living messages yeah. on YouTube, yeah. Yeah. living messages on Facebook of how they, you know, they are impacted by those programs. Yeah. So don't limit your vision, your ministry to just your local church or the regions that you travel to. This day you can even minister to somebody from India. I remember when some sometimes in the early when I started early that somebody from India called me and said, he, well, he sent a message on YouTube that you'd like to be part of my program. I told him, do you know where I am? <laughs> I'm not in India. <laughs> you know, so you could touch people all over the world. And all you need to do is have the vision, have the passion. And then God is going to use your ministry to maybe touch someone in a place you'll not be able to. In fact, mission work is going to be more, you know, media based than you know traveling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that people shouldn't travel. You can travel if you have the uh, invitation to go to those places. But if you can package your ministry or your your uh, your messages and put them on YouTube, you may even be able to reach places you can travel to. Yeah, sure. You know, so it is very important. Besides just giving publicity to your ministry. You have a message that God puts in your heart and He you wants that message to reach nations. Mm-hmm. It is very easy now. You don't have to pay a lot of money. All you need is internet connection and a small, you know, your laptop or iPad or even your iPhone. You can record it, you know. Mm-hmm. Call yourself on your iPhone and simply, you know, just upload it. In fact, they are making it so easy now mm-hmm. to upload, yeah. you know, quicker and easier. We have been enlightened that we can use the media, amen, we can use the media to reach the world, but that is what we really wanted to enlighten our people, and the a professional, uh, those of you who want to record and so on, you want him to record your your meetings and air for you and things like that, just contact him. Let's go ahead and talk to the top I believe that when God wants to do something new in your life, the first thing he does is to download an idea into you. Mm -hmm. And he did download this idea of radio and television into the Archbishop Stephen and his wife. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that when my father and my mother gave back to me, it took 23 chromosomes of daddy and mommy, 23, Mm -hmm. to make me a princess. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, which means everything that I need is already inside me. So if everything you need is inside you, which means that we're coming together as one, that means everything that I need to make that idea work, you can give to me. Am I here? So we don't have time to waste anymore. Because if you put 23 and 23 together, it shows 96 
are, are more than billions of character that God has inside you. Uh -huh. And it would take 96 years for God to be able to take each of those characters out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Who has time for 96 years? Mm. Nah. Many people don't live up to 96. Uh -huh. I'm glad my father is 96. Oh, good. So, which means all these characters have been exemplified. Uh -huh. Hallelujah! Amen. So what we are going to do tonight, because I believe that we don't have time to waste anymore. It's about time we let we tell what the enemy we have to get the enemy to say whatever they want to say because guess what? Whether you are doing good or wrong, they are still going to talk. Yeah. It's about time to let them talk. Give them something to talk about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible said the prayer without ceasing. Uh -huh. And one thing I realized about prayer that people don't realize that God answers prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And no matter what the situation is, when you give God glory and when you walk in the will of God, He will answer your prayer. Yeah. You see, yeah. God doesn't have a to-do list. Yeah. We have a to-do list. God doesn't. Mm -hmm. He sits and waits for us to come before Him and pray. But what we do is we call our friend and we ask him to pray for us. Mm. Who's the best person to pray for you but than yourself? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Because you know what you need. Yeah. God knows all of our needs. Yeah. But he wants us to come before him yeah. in prayer. Yeah. And when you come before God, God will answer your prayer. You have to believe at the moment that you're praying. Whatever you're praying for. At the moment that you open your mouth and say, Lord. He gave us permission to use his name. Hallelujah, glory to God. And no matter what you need from God, yeah. He will give it to you. Yeah. But you have to walk in His will. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, the power of prayer will change the situation. Yeah. God has power and to, to, to change your situation. Whatever circumstances you're going through. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, it might seem difficult to you. But with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, in, in this country... Coming from a, 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 a well, they say a developing country right now. No matter how difficult it looks to you, God already knows what you're going through. Yeah. But see, He wants us to come to Him in prayer. Yeah. He don't want us to sit right. and go into a pity party. But, you know, we, we have a we have a tendency of, of of saying, "Oh, God is not answering my prayer." Yeah. We have a tendency of saying, "Well, I don't think that God is hearing me. He is not deaf." Right. The minute you open your mouth and say, Lord, okay. Heavenly Father, He is there at the moment. At the moment you you call His name. Yeah. At the moment you open your mouth to start to speak, He is there. Yeah. And He hear everything. He hear all your needs. He know what you need, but He want you to come. He said, ask. ask. Seek and knock. You can't stay in your home and ask God for a job and not go on the, on the interview. Uh -huh. right. 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 You have to go out there first and fill the application. You then you pray. Say, and you, sometimes you don't even have to do that. Once you fill that application out yes. and say in Jesus' name. The, the name Jesus, if you don't know how to pray, just say Jesus. Uh -huh. Just call his name. Uh -huh. Because by saying Jesus, he already answered the prayer. Uh -huh. Do you know how powerful that name is? Uh -huh. If you don't know how to pray, just say Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. Call his name seven times. Uh -huh. Three times. And when he said Jesus, he's already making it happen. Yeah, because that name is so powerful yeah. that when the demons hear Jesus, it burns the air they have to run away. Yeah. And your situation will change if you don't know the prayer and say, Jesus, help me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. That's it. You don't have to go into a long prayer. Sometimes you can just talk to him. We believe that if you say, oh, we have to go into all of that. No, you don't have to do all of that for God to hear you. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to go into the town. God knows all in, in um, mm -hmm. Psalms 19, he said there is no language yes. or speech mm -hmm. that he doesn't understand. He created languages. Yeah. So you don't have to go into towns to pray to God. Uh -huh. You can just say, Lord, I need this. Yes. And and most of the mothers here that have boy children, mm -hmm. you know we stay on our knees for them. Mm -hmm. We have to stay on our knees for our sons. And I know for a fact that all I have to say is, Lord, I can't do your work and take care of my son at the same time. Because, you know, sometimes our children make us to a point where we don't even know where to go. All we can say, Lord, I give him to you when I do your work. 
And when you say that, God, God is going to enter into that faith. Whatever it is that you, that you need, God will answer that prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. So I want you to know that you don't have to make an appointment to see God. He sits on the throne all the time, just waiting for us to come to him. Mm -hmm. We don't have to call pastor, last pastor, lay hands on us and, and do all of that stuff. We have to say, Lord, I need your help today. Yeah. Lord, you said that you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory to Christ Jesus. Yes. You can even say to our Father, if you don't know how to pray, he give us the prayer. His own prayer. Amen. So it's no excuse not to pray. <laughs> you see, when, when you call a prayer meeting, People say that I'm so busy. What? what are you busy doing? The most important thing is to be in a prayer meeting. Yes. The most important thing Amen. is to pray. Amen. Without prayer, you cannot do anything. Without prayer, you are empty barrel. Yes. Hallelujah, glory to God. So what I'm saying to you today is God is in charge. God has powers. He knows your circumstances. Yes. He knows what you're going through. He just wants you to come before him and tell him what it is. It's like our children. We have children, we know if we give them um, supplies, and when they run out, they have to come to us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But we already know within the time frame we give them, they, they should come. Yes. They, they need to come. So I want to say one thing. Prayer strengthens you. Prayer gets you into a closer relationship with God. Yes. It also makes you intimate that when you open your mouth mm -hmm. to pray, he, say, he, he will tell, shh, heaven. My daughter is praying. Mm -hmm. He knows your voice. He recognizes your voice yes. because you pray often. Yes. You don't just pray on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. You just don't pray at prayer meetings. Amen. You pray all the time. Amen. I cannot function unless I pray. Yeah. I get up every morning, 5 o'clock, and pray to God. Mm -hmm. And I have a special chair in my, in my room where I sit there, and I know even before I get up, the Lord will wake me up to pray. Huh? Yeah. Yes. That's what he does. You will not sleep all that time mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit knows that you... Mm -hmm. You know that the Holy Spirit is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So when that time comes, you get up and you go straight there and you meet the Savior. And you can tell when, when God is in your presence. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know what you guys go through, but when I get in the presence of the Lord, there's peace. Yes. I don't have to worry. I'm, I'm, I feel so relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to have the chill bumps and the, and the goose pimples and all that to be in the presence of God. <laughs> because, see, we, we wait to hear the feet of the hands in our hand rising and the chill bumps and then we know God is in, in our presence. No. Because if you pray with God all the time, He knows. He knows all your needs. He supply all your needs. So all I have to say to you today is, in all you do, if you are not in prayer, if you don't pray, you are losing out so much. You are losing out a lot if you don't pray. It's just like you're walking in the dark. Because see, prayer is the root that grows that plant. It is the, it's the root. Yeah. You can't grow anything unless you put a seed in the ground. Yes. And prayer is the root. Yes. And from that root, that whatever it is grows up. Intimacy with God. And when you do that, God will answer your prayer immediately. Mm. I didn't say tomorrow or yesterday. He answers prayer immediately. Yes. Try God. Mm -hmm. Try God and see what he will do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are five. The iron sharpened iron. We are going back to where we started from. Yeah. Iron sharpened iron. Yeah. Yeah. Most of you know what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Uh, Reverend Dr. Richard Akinji is going to give us a seven minutes clip. Amen. Amen. I tell you, we are all blessed. Amen. And the man of God gets ready. Amen. See, iron chopping at the iron. 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 <laughs> See, somebody can, can put the scripture here right now and you, your spirit will just be lifted. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's Amen. welcome Reverend Dr. Akinji. So I'll pray. Amen. Somebody. Amen. One of us say that um, the mm. Old Testament priests, they go to the temple, they go with um, a bull and two goats. He offer the bull for his own, the remission of his own sin, and the other two for the for the nation. He put his hands on one and then um, transfer all the sin of the people into the innocent goats. And then slit out the throat, <laughs> put his blood, <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. And the other one is led uh, into the into the bush yeah. and thrown down on the cliff. Yeah. Amen, somebody. 
Mm. So the sin of the people, the people have peace at least for one year. Mm. <laughs> they have peace, they are confident that their sin are forgiven for good one year. They don't have to worry about condemnation or anything for one year. The sin was not removed, it was covered. And the scripture says that he stand, the priest stood in the temple, offering a repeated sacrifice. Right. That didn't have power to remove sin. Right. He only yes. cover sin for one year. Yes. 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 Correct. But then the perfect mm -hmm. priest came. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The perfect priest came. Yeah. 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 He offered a perfect sacrifice. Yeah. 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 For sin. Yeah. Yeah. Once. For time and for eternity. Amen. And the word of God says, after he offered that perfect sacrifice, he sat down. Because all the work is finished. He completed, he concluded all matters of sins. He sat down. Unlike the Old Testament priest that had to still stand because the offering is continuous. Because the sin is ongoing. Praise the Lord somebody. Because the sin, the sacrifice will only cover the sin for one year. But Jesus Christ offered a perfect sacrifice. A permanent sacrifice. Then he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Praise the Lord somebody. So he's not getting, he's not going back to that cross no. because the penalty is paid, the sacrifice is paid. He met somebody. Amen. When he died, or he died with all our sins, yeah. went into the into the grave with him. Yes. When he came out, he didn't come out with our sins. Our sins oh, yeah. was left yeah. in the grave. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. So his resurrection was a proof that the sacrifice that he offered on the cross was approved, yeah. was completed and total. Yes. The sins. Present, past, and future have been paid for. Amen. And that is why he said it is finished. Thank Amen. You. Amen. I'll modify the sermon that I did this morning, which was a little over an hour and five minutes. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like more? More? You know, it says this, that God gives us the spirit without living. Do you know what you know what that means? It's not a one-time thing. Yes. We can come back for more yeah. and more yeah. and more yeah. and more. Yeah. Right? Do you ever get tired out in ministry? Do you ever say, Lord, I try and I'm trying, I'm trying, and I just don't seem to be breaking through what in the world is wrong? Yeah. Yeah, we all get it. I, I do, and we learn. You know what happens when <sighs> there are certain things that we learn as children, Right? that were taught that aren't correct, right? Mm -hmm. We learn from our parents, who learn from their parents, who learn from their parents wrong things, and they pass it on to us, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And those things cause us to stumble. Those things cause us to hit walls in ministry, and we don't even know it. And we're just trying to minister. We're trying to do our best. We're trying to follow the Word of God. We know what the Word of God is, and we come up across the wall, mm. right? Wow. Mm. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, mm -hmm. what does it say? Therefore I urge you, brothers, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, or in view of God's mercy, that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice which is acceptable to God. Let me just explain a little bit about that. The reason why right, we can't get beyond certain things is because we're not sacrificing those things that we struggle with. It says, right? It says to present your bodies as a sacrifice. What's a sacrifice? You learn about the sacrifices in the Old Testament, right? Where they put the animals, the, the, the perfect animals, they put the animals without blemish on the sacrifice. Why? Because it was a picture of Jesus Christ. But it was also a picture of what we need to do Right. With all the stuff of the world, all the things that that we struggle with that are preventing us from going forward, right? And it's not just after we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God does right. so much more. We need when God brings things to our minds, we need to say, Lord, it is yours. I sacrifice it on your altar, and we come alongside. That's what it means present. We need to come alongside a holy, righteous God mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit fire, to cleanse and put those things to death that which are hindering us to moving forward. 
and you can move forward in the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. If we, every single time we get to a point, we can sacrifice and say, Lord, take everything away that's hindering my work and my intimacy with you because yes. I want to know you more. I want to know what you're doing. I want to hear what you're, you're saying to me so that I can do what you're doing yes. in the workplace. And then your ministry yes. will launch forward. You can't do it by yourself. Right? you got to allow the, the, the Word of God and the Spirit of God to transform you. The, uh, yes. and, and verse 2. You, we can become from caterpillars to butterflies. We can be, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We can have new minds to go out and do the great word of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk about prayer. Because prayer can move mountains. Amen. Yeah. One of my friends that knew me said, ah, Pastor Shola, how are you? He said, what do you come to do here at the first class? He said, I come to pray. They said, we come for our retreat. We're going to pray to three or four. So we are praying. So the following day, I begin to feel a pain at my back and was so tense. And then we pray, three of us. We really pray. God, I come to pray and fast for three days. Why is this pain? Uh, when I cannot get the pain, I say, hey, well, we went to the hospital. I said, please carry me. But I could not stand up. So they have to take the water to the, uh, to the bathroom and one hold me on, on this hand, another hold me, and they were taking me to to the uh, to the bathroom to take a shower so that we can you know, leave the retreat and go. And then I saw this man that was with his group praying. He was a pastor. And then he said, what happened to this man? What happened to you guys? Mm. He said, this man is sick. I saw him yesterday. He said, yeah, but this man has a back pain. He said, can't you pray? <laughs> we say, we are praying. He said, what? <laughs> you pray for just back pain, and back pain did not disappear. He said, your prayer cannot kill a fly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, mm. I, was, I was so hungry with him. <laughs> I said, it is my prayer that cannot kill a fly. Uh, come and pray, if you want to pray, so that this thing will disappear. Because I could not believe in my eyes. <laughs> not though I said there is a miracle, but I have not seen one, not the best one. <laughs> They pray him for me, let him pray. So I said, take me there, just let him pray and let me go. So to the hospital. So as I lay down, it was like this man. And he just said, just three sentences. He said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he said, God, you have no hand at the hand of your prophet. Before he said that, he said, and I heard that God told me to ask you to rise up and shout to the hallelujah. Remember that I was, I was not with him. Yeah. I just want to say, okay. I don't just pray, I don't let me go. Yeah. But I do not know the force mm -hmm. that just carried me and said, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We thought that it is like some, something that will remove the pain out of my back. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. That, yeah. that was my first miracle. And yeah. ever since, I knew that mm -hmm. the name of Jesus yeah. is above no. every other name. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. name, yeah. I invite you to yeah. join me if you have a chance. Uh -huh. We're going to pray in that name of Jesus together. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. Yeah. He said, He prayed. That's Jesus Himself. Yes. Now, He went for that and he said, Say, Father, if thou, will, if, thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, listen to 43. And there appeared, appeared. They appear. So God has a prayer. Look at that. Right there and then, and then the angel came and strengthened him. Yeah. But the Bible said the next verse, then he earnestly went back into prayer. Yeah. And as he was yeah. praying, that the, 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 the drop of the sweat was like that of blood. Yeah. Dropping down. Yeah. Yeah. Dropping down. Yeah. Can you imagine that? That's our God himself. Yeah. So if you can do that, I told them this morning, I said, the only way you can converse with the Holy Spirit yeah. Pray. You come back. You talk to them. You spend time with them. And then overnight he prayed. He prayed. He said all night Jesus prayed before he chose his apostles. Then he went after and chose his apostles. But listen to this. Then the Bible said that after that he started healing the sick, the blind, the lame, the leper. And if 
you notice that after a while Jesus take a little break to converse with the Father. And they come back to the scene. And when he comes back to the scene, the extraordinary happens. Let me just give you one thing and I'll go. Testimony. You know, we were in the church one day. And for a long time, I would not get a visa to London. My parents used to live in London. And uh, so I traveled to somewhere else in Europe. So we were in the church praying. And the Holy Spirit taught me. He said, look, son, the door to London is open. Get up and go. Mm -hmm. So I got up. I picked up my bag. I ran the same visa, the passport that was marked. You know, you cannot get into, into London. I picked up that passport. Right. And I went straight to the train station. I was, in, I was in Vienna, Austria. I went straight to the train station. Booked the ticket. I don't have a visa. I jumped inside the train. Pow. All right, all right. I started going. Let me tell you what, what happened. Inside the cubicle that I was, I was preaching the gospel to a group of people inside the cubicle. They, you know how the train is. As I was preaching the gospel, yeah. I met an American, mm -hmm. a white man. I said, who are you? I said, I'm Jesse. My evangelist Jesse. I'm, I'm from Europe. I just finished my bachelor's degree. I'm going to London on holiday. I can't tell the details, you know. <laughs> you leave it right there. Then he told me, he said, look. I said, you're from America. I like to go to America. I was not thinking about America. Listen to this. Listen to this testimony. God is going to blow you away. I was not thinking about America. America was not in my mind at all. Mm -hmm. He said, you'll be in America. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said, you'll be in America. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this. I'm not done. Then when we get right into the, into the port of entry, they look at the same passport. We've, we sued the consulate before. We fought. They look at the passport. They go, pack, 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 pack. They stand before me, they say, you can go into London. Wow. Wow. When God opened the door for you, nobody can cross it. When God opened the door, nobody can cross it. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That I'm the door. When I open the door, nobody can do what? Nobody can lose it. So I don't know what you're going through right now. But I'm here to tell you that whatever you are going through, prayer is the key. They will connect you to the heaven. And you will bring down every stronghold. Because he is. Amen. God bless you. Our God is awesome. Yeah. I just thank God for my co-pastors talking about prayer. Uh -huh. And I thank God because a prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A winner will not quit. Yeah. And a quitter will not, uh -huh. not win. Yeah. And the book of Romans says that everything Roma 8 28 uh -huh. he said everything work together yeah, for good for them yes. that love God yeah. and I thank God that we have the lovers of God here uh -huh. yes. yeah. so God I said as in the Lord yeah. everything you are going through right For his glory. Amen. That is why you should not give up. Amen. That is why I should not give up. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I think they foresaw the scripture. That's right. And they never bow to Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. So we are not bowing down. with you. Yeah. And because we know if I say they that know they are God they shall do what? Excellent. And they shall be strong. There is no weak place for somebody going up there. If you are up there and you are weak, you will be put down. So everybody seated here Please know that whatever you are going through is working together yeah. for the glory of God. Yeah. And don't let the devil deceive you. Yes. That, hey, brother, it's not everything we're going through that is 
devil. Yeah. Yeah. And like me, I don't even care about him again because I checked him yesterday. He was under my foot. Oh, hey. And the, and the Bible says we are highly exalted. Yes. So the, the ones that are not under your foot, yes. you are exalted above them. Yes. He said we are exalted above principalities yes. and powers yes. and the rulers yes. of darkness yes. in the high places. Yes. So we are exalted. Yes. And we are seated. Yes. Of God, yeah. we are not sitting in the left hand, no. in the right hand. No. So please, in this end time, God is looking for warriors. Yeah. Yeah. It's not looking for the uh, people that are complaining. Yeah. 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 They are that complain so far, pay. Yeah. <laughs> and they that pray, they praise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Our God. Amen. Amen. That situation is about to be Hallelujah. shaking. Amen. That Amen. 
Yeah. Demo is about to be yeah. shaken. Yeah. That generational cause is about to be rooted out. Yeah. I'm angry about yeah. the death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Continue to be angry about him yeah. until he leave my people alone. Yeah. Yeah. And if you refuse, we know what to do to him. Yeah. Yeah. Resist him. Yeah. Yeah. Cast him out. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So yeah. everything works together. Yeah. For good. Yeah. For them yeah. that love God. Yeah. Love God. Yeah. Love God. Yeah. I just want to commend those that have come before me. Talking about prayer. Uh -huh. I tell you, prayer is the key. Yes. But in knowing your prayer, you need to know who you are. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You are God's kids. Yes. You are kingdom children. Yes. Amen. You are a royal priesthood. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. You are a holy nation. Yes.
no matter what your circumstance is, just know that God is with you. He also says faith is that one war that we have to fight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yes. You better have some faith. Amen. Because none of this means anything if you don't have faith in God. That's right. You gotta be what? Faithful. You gotta know that you're serving a faithful God. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm gonna wrap this up with a short testimony. And it has to do with missions. This past summer I had a very intimate time with my daddy on a cruise where everybody else was on a cruise for other reasons. But I was on a cruise because I dedicated to my daddy. I told him, Father, you have told me now to go and minister to your children. And he told me how to do it. I went on a cruise and I stayed in prayer with him. I stayed in prayer. We got to the first stop and that was Nassau. Well, they have these uh, rules that we cannot get off the ship to feed the people. Nor can you minister the word through feeding them or giving them different things. So before getting off the ship, they told me right down on the ground level that I could not take the food that I was taking to give to the people on the street. And so while the guy was called, he called two or three other people. I said, oh no, I'm on assignment. Uh -huh. So I had to tell them I'm on there looking at me like I'm crazy. I said, I'm on an assignment. So I said, well, call whomever down here. I need to talk to them. Well, while they were calling pastors, yes. I was talking to my daddy. Yes. And my daddy yes. said, have me on an assignment. Yes. But I got my mother here. She's 83 years old. And she started, you know how you love them to death. But they started saying, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't go into this. I said, oh, no, mom. I'm talking to my daddy right now. Because yeah. I'm on an assignment. Yes. And I'm just talking about prayer. Just to drive this forth on this back on down. So I was telling the Lord why the, the captain of the ship was coming down and telling me I, I couldn't take this stuff off the ship. I said, Father, you got me on assignment. You got to open some doors. Uh -huh. You got to open some doors because they sure me rules there. But I know you are powerful. You are all my own powerful. You got me on assignment. I got to go here and wear some souls. I'm in mission. I've been praying for this thing for a long time. Well, here come two or three of them. And they got some books to show me. And so they, come, they came up to me and my mother started just crying. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at them and said, well, I'm on an assignment. They said, well, all due respect to you, there is an ordinance that we cannot bring food off the ship. And you cannot. They were showing me two of the three different things. And so I'm still praying to the Lord. Okay, Father, this is the last resort. You got me on the assignment. Open the store. In an instant, you hear me? In an instant, the captain said, well, I see you in love with this. I said nothing. He said, I'm going to let you deal with it. He said, as far as I'm concerned, take this food off this ship. I'm going to let you deal with it. But I wasn't done. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to let you take it off the ship, but you need to stop by customs. Yeah. I said, okay. He said, you need to take the food, food by customs. Take this sheet, because I've already shown it to you now. you got to get through customs with it. Well, I got by the gate. Here's my mother still walking me. Oh, maybe we shouldn't do it right now. I said, no, Mom. I'm on an assignment. I got to go. <laughs> Daddy's already open one door. It's just another door. It's just another door. He's going to open one door. You know, don't pray for me. You prayed over me before I left. I can feel the prayers when I got to the gate. Woo. Five or six people came. Oh, what is it you having today? Food! Oh, you can't carry this food. I said, no, but I'm going over to customs. Just let me carry it to customs. They said, oh, well, we got to go with it because you can't give any of it out. So he walked with me and my mom. She just did. <laughs> I'm like, I got to walk away from her because I'm praying to my dad. Okay, Father, we're getting ready to go to customs. You got me on this assignment. I got to win some souls here. I've been praying on this for a long time. Okay, so I get to customs. They let me in. What is all this stuff? Because I got bags. I'm telling you, I got bags. So they take me to this first room. They said, well, there is an ordinance. You cannot bring food. So I said, well, I'm on an assignment. And so one guy get up. He said, you pastor? I said, I am. He said, well, just wait a minute. Let me call my 
supervisor in. I'm like, Lord, Father, come on, Dad. I got to get through this. So he said, while we wait, I'm still praying. He said, uh, can you pray for me before you get in? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it was coming in. I knew it was coming. So I stopped praying for him. Stop praying for him. A few minutes later, the door opens up and just two big guys come in, the superintendent of customs. And they said, we just got a call that you were coming here. Yes. And so the guy that I prayed on said, oh. whoever is Superintendent Max, he said, um, this is a pastor. And she's come here to pray over our people. Yeah. And so I said, sir, I just want to pray. I, and I just start giving it out to him. I, you know, I am, I am a pastor of God. I came here to pray, not to start anything. I just want to feed some of your people. He said, well, let me see. I said, here's some literature for it. He said, he said well, let me have some prayer too. Ah. So I prayed for him. I prayed pray for him. And before I got out of custody, yeah. I had already won souls to Christ. Yeah. My mother can tell. She was crying tears of joy by that time. When we got to the door, they were fanning me down. Oh, well, I'll take some prayer. Could I have some of them bags too? And I'm telling you, it was the most blessed. Blessed trip I have ever been on. Yeah. Yeah. We want so many souls, and all I'm saying all that to say that prayer changes things. Yeah. Don't take no from anybody if you want something and you love the Lord. God knows your heart. Mark 11 24 says, Pray. Pray what? No, it said that, that particular scripture, Mark 11 24 says, Pray. And God would give you the desires of your heart. He will give it to you no matter what it is. God was so mighty. I'm telling you, I had people on the ship coming to me asking me to pray for them. And they were from all over the world. And that was not me. That was God. And the whole time I said, Daddy, this trip belongs to you. And every single person that I prayed for, even the security guys, before we would get through, they were asking for prayer. And that is not me. I wasn't yelling and screaming. That was my day. And I'm just here to tell you, just pray. Just pray. All of us are ministers of the Lord. In the Great Commission, it tells us we are commanded to go out and do missions. Amen. So pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen. all the time, and then we say all the time God is good. Let's leave that last part off. Let's just say God is. Let's bring it down to the word of rubber meets the road. Because God is, we is. And if he wasn't, we ain't. That's right. Hallelujah. Oh, my sister, when she's talking about that made me think to, I, I was going to say something else, but I wanted to share this one. I went to go to Pakistan. How many remember when the United States uh, uh, SEAL team went into Abbottabad and captured Osama bin Laden. Yes. Yes. We were due to be in that town. That town is, that was on our itinerary for the first place that we were going to be. That is where the military retires, and that's also where they train the military police for the uh, uh, Islamic State of Pakistan. And, and we were to be there, and then the Lord worked it out to where our visa was not approved at that time. Two more times, we were, it, it, it didn't get approved, and we were wondering why. Amen. Then we heard on the news that in the same cities, two different cities that we were going to be in, in these particular meetings, yeah. that the, uh, that the uh, Muslims were shooting the Christians as they were coming out. Wow. Mowing them down, men, women, and children. So what happens? Our visa got approved, and, and, and we went in in June, right in the middle of the hottest time. So it was up to 50 degrees centigrade in Pakistan. Uh, for those that, uh, that don't know what that means, it's over 120 degrees in the shade. Sort of like Texas, praise God. Huh? Now here's an old man, Matthew, Matthew Redmond was there. And, and, and when we got there, it was a miracle that we got in 
there because at that time they were not really letting a lot of Americans go in there. I was at the embassy and people were getting turned away and turned down. Praise God. But we were on assignment. We were on a mission from God. We had prayer behind it because prayer is the key that changes and unlocks the door. And the anointing team breaks the yoke. I'm so 
Somebody would come in here and has not been touched. Uh, huh. That person must be in the wrong place. Yes. <laughs> this is a gathering of preachers, yes. Yes. ministers of the gospel. Yes. Mm. And as I look at the invitation that the Archbishop sent out, he indicated that it was a dedication yes. of the television and radio yes. ministry yes. and also the and the blessing. And the trend has been all through about prayers tonight. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ice it up. I'm gonna ice it up with this. Hallelujah. There cannot be true prayers without consecration. Yes, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Right. Yes. Amen. Jesus. We live in times that are very troublesome. That's right. Yes. 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 Beside every good man, there's an awesome great queen, praise Amen. God. And Father, we thank you that they are one in the spirit, and they are one in this ministry. Amen. Father God, we anoint them. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon them. I release an apostolic blessing. I declare and I decree, Father, the windfall of finances to come to this ministry. Lord, that, that they will not have to worry. Lord, that you will let them work out of the overflow. Lord, that your abundance of uh, 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 blessings, that you will cause men to lay onto their bosom, Father God. Father, syndicate this program, Father. Let it go to the uttermost parts of this world. Father, let souls be saved. Let them be delivered. Let them be filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, let the world know, Father, that you are still God and that you perform miracles and that you are working through this ministry, Father God. Hallelujah, we give you praise and honor for those that are here today to help celebrate and as we set apart and set aside this couple, Father, that you have ordained, preordained from the foundations of this world to be right here, hallelujah, in Silver Spring, Maryland, Father God, to be working this work in every apostle and bishop and doctor and minister that's an evangelist that's here today. Father, let us undergird them in prayer. Hallelujah, let us lift them up. Father God, all the time, 24-7, let us be their all armor bearers, God. Lord, that is their arms get tired. Lord, that we're there to uplift them and to hold them. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you honor. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus, let the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. Seven and 
Hallelujah. 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 In a moment like this, I will sing a new song, and I will sing a wonderful song to my Lord. In a moment like this, I will sing a new song. Let us stand up. I will sing a wonderful song to my Lord. Jesus, I love you. I'm singing. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. Singing. I love you, Lord. I will sing a wonderful song. 